Good morning, everybody. Come on. We didn't really test this thing before, but hopefully. Did you turn it on? Yeah, it's on. I did. Everybody hear me? No, kinda. Hear me now? Yeah, good. No, not really. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I need to change this thing. Maybe put it down here. We thought we knew what we were doing, but pretty much. Right. Better hook it on my beard. It'll be hidden in there. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for coming this morning on this uh, very cold day, and I can attest to the wind and the cold. We were not inside yesterday at the food bank. We were outside giving food out. So, um, kudos to the volunteers that came out. Uh, Lisa and Mercedes were there with me yesterday. So, uh, if you don't believe me, ask them how cold it was. So, it was it was pretty bad out there. Um, but I would say I'm glad we're not out there this morning. I think this morning's worse than yesterday. Uh, so thank you all for joining this morning and just being able to be here. Uh, happy to be up here again today. I talked to Rob and Denise. They had a great time at the farm show. Uh, they got to see the tractor square dancing and lots of other things going on there. And uh, my wife uh, explained to me that it made national news because there was a mullet competition going on. Um, so that was kind of a the first mullet competition I think ever. So anyways, kind of something funny that happened at, I asked Rob and Denise if they went to that, they laughed and said no. Um, so anyways, uh, thanks for joining this morning and uh, we'll go ahead and move right into our centering words. So centering words come from Jeremiah 1.5. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before I saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. Today we're going to be just uh, talking about the plan that God has in store for us. And just that we all may try to control that plan. And uh, we need to be trying to look to Him uh, for guidance in just our daily lives and all that we do. So. Join me as we just pray quick this morning and start our morning off with a prayer and then we'll stand and sing. Dear Gracious Lord, just thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning just for just this congregation that continues to show just to give you the glory and the praise for just uh, all you do in our lives and to be able to gather here this morning to worship together just to be reminded of all you do uh, for, each, for all of us each and every day. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Thank you. 
Go ahead and have a seat, everybody. <clears throat> so, I relate church and the food bank a lot of times when I am up here talking, so that's just what you're going to get with me. As long as I'm related to the food bank, that's a good analogy for me. Um, so, during giving time, I get asked a lot of the time by churches what to pray for at the food bank. Uh, what do we need at the food bank? Um, top three things. Funds, volunteers, and prayer. So those are the top three things that we ask for at the food bank, and I feel the church are very similar. We need a congregation. We need funds to make this congregation keep going and just being able to gather here this morning. And we need prayer just to continue on uh, from here in this place just to be able to gather here. So um, as you're doing that, whether it's big or small, these funds can be used to continue just with this mission in this congregation, this church, to help other missions as well, not just this church, to outside of these doors. Um, and to be able to keep these doors open. The funds don't make us believe in Christ. But to be able to be here and gather together, that's what's needed. So let's say a prayer. Um, the song that's going to, it's a little bit longer song that is going to be happening during giving time. Pay attention to the words because it goes really well with what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just uh, thank you for, again, us gathering here this morning. We thank you for just all that this church has to offer, just uh, inside these doors and outside these doors, just the funds that come into this congregation, just that it can be used wisely, uh, just to do your work here on this earth. We just ask your blessing on those funds uh, as they come in, uh, that they go out in a way that you would have. In your heavenly name we pray, amen. Come and give and listen to the words.
hope you heard it enough in that song, uh, Good Plans. He has good plans for us all. And uh, he has, way before we're even born, plans for us and what we're to do just to live the life that he has in store for us. Um, moving into prayer time, Rob left a couple here um, for me to say, so I'll start. Um, I encourage you, if you do have a prayer request, I know... Rob and Denise are not here right now, but still to give it this morning because it gets back to them so they can uh, share that next week as well and continue prayers throughout the week. Um, so Diane from, this looks like Karen Scott, fell and broke knee and has a surgery coming up. Um, continued prayers for Oe and healing of leg pain. Um, and Rod Hillegas has a knee replacement on I think this is 129 it may be 24 so anyways um, 29 yeah okay so those are the few that he left me um, I'll go ahead and add to that just a couple I'm always praying for the food bank and as I started today prayers just through the winter months it gets a little sketchy out there um, for all of us that are out there but we served over 400 families yesterday, even in the cold and the wind, um, which is down from our normal Saturday because I think the weather prevented some folks from coming. We see a lot of elderly that don't step out. They don't want to come out their door because they're worried of slips and falls. Um, but prayers for those people that just that they have the food that they need if they can't get out to get it from us just uh, through the winter months that we get some breaks in the weather that they can still come and receive the food uh, that they're needing. So um, any others today? Any other prayer requests? You going online? Well, I have actually a couple that were texted. Perfect. Okay, this list is from Gail Swain. Um, Dan and Kathy Wood sick and had COVID. They're over that, but now they're sick again. Joanne um, has dementia and Norma is nervous with upcoming double mastectomy and pretest showing liver issues. And John, who is Norma's husband, has skin cancer, spots, places all over face, using chemo cream, has three surgeries on the nose, also has an aneurysm in the stomach, and Art Miller is sick but not with COVID. And then these are from Liz Wiley. Um, if we could pray for her granddaughter, Hazley, who is four months old. She has been hospitalized at Conma since Thursday. She's struggling to breathe with RSV, has low oxygen, they have her on three liters of oxygen, has a high fever. She got worse last night. Hazley's mom, Casey, also has RSV. And if we can also pray for Wayne, he has it too. RSV's nasty. I mean, it seems like it's going around everywhere right now, but. Do you have online or not yet? I do. Okay, you have the microphone. Um, Shannon Davis has an unspoken. And also pray for our grandmother, uh, Sandy. She was hospitalized this week with some stroke symptoms. Um, and I'm sure she'll be in the hospital this weekend. Um, so yeah, prayers for her, please. Any others? Oh, Maddie has the microphone. Um, I can praise Kai is okay now. He had strep throat and nobody else got it in the family. So that's a praise. Um, we have a friend, Phyllis, and she was in a car accident. And, um, she has some broken bones. <coughs> and also another friend, Lynn, um, she fell and broke her kneecap. Phyllis in a car accident and Lynn, you said, Lynn. fell and broke her kneecap. <coughs> All right. So a lady from our work today, this morning at 9 o'clock, she passed away. Her name is Armelda. Armelda. Armelda? Yes. Uh, prayers from my grandson on February 19th. He'll be going in for his brain surgery. And first name? Hunter. Hunter. I got to pray 
ladies, I'm going to the pink eye. <laughs> and my husband did, didn't get it, so that was a good. Over the pink eye. It's contagious, is what they say. I know. Uh, one of my Dunlop truck drivers is going to be starting treatments for cancer. His name is Ross Miller. Ross. And also, my son and daughter in law, Wendy, they're going through some really tough times right now. They just need prayers back. And Eddie son, and Wendy. I'm sorry. Eddie and Wendy. Eddie and Wendy. 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 Like outside. Gotcha. It's Wendy out there. Okay. Um. First one is prayers for Steve and I. We've been trying to have babies for the last couple months, and we had to do a fertility treatment. They both failed, so we're seeing a doctor and have a whole different game plan. So. We kind of keep in hush hush, but we could use the prayers because prayers are powerful. So, um, also for Steve's friend Dave Hiley, um, he is has stage four pancreatic cancer, and um, we've been praying for him. But I think it's a lot of it is mental right now. Like he's having some mentality issues with at the end of his life. Um, I think like the, his kids had to take the guns out of the house and just. You know, you're 60 years old and you didn't expect this, and it was buried all of a sudden. So um, just pray for his, um, just his mental health and his family and his salvation, because I don't think that they're very um, spiritual or they don't go to church or anything. So salvation is probably the biggest one to pray for for him. Whether we can somehow talk about it in a way that he can <coughs> process it and understand it and accept or somebody down. I mean, he was four hours away, so somebody down there, too. So, thank you. Anybody else? All good? Okay. Let's go ahead and come to the Lord in prayer, and as Rob usually does, uh, a few minutes of silence to pray. Your own for maybe some unspokens you have going on in your life, or just for this list that... Uh, we lifted up this morning, uh, lots to pray about. There's lots more than this list. Uh, so just let's come to the Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, we lift up this entire list this morning and just uh, the list that's beyond this list, uh, uh, the many that are on this Sunday morning that are being lifted up in churches all around, just uh, in this area and outside. Just We just ask your guidance on this list. We, we have lots of sickness going on that continues to go on. Uh, we just ask your healing hand to be on many. We ask your just protection to be on many that are beside those that are going through sickness. We just ask your um, continued just comfort and blessing on just this entire organization that give them the strength to just leave here and continue praying and continue asking you for just help and guidance and just comfort. We just continue to ask you for just all that you do and this church and just all that you do in each and every one of us that we can continue to just to spread your word and just to be a witness and a comfort to those that maybe are not um, Christians and just hopefully uh, lead them and guide them towards just the way that you have just continue to be with us the message today and just uh, let my words just be able to be taken from here um, and be meaningful in many of our lives in your heavenly name we pray amen Okay, so my printer did not cooperate, so I'm dealing with big old papers this morning, so if you see me flipping papers, and Nancy said start throwing them on the floor, so I don't know, I might end up starting to do that. If you see papers flying, it's because they're in my way. Um, 
But, so God's plan for our lives. And uh, a couple prayer requests out there actually go really well with what um, we're going to be talking about today. So, <clears throat> God has a plan before we even exist. Um, and I'm going to be reading from James 1, 5 through 8, just to kind of start off here. Um, before I shaped you in the womb. Nope. Let me backtrack. So you've got papers everywhere already, and I'm going off the Bible now. All right. James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives you to... Who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will, be it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like waves in the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Um, so we need to be focused on what God has in store for us. We are unstable, it says, uh, if we are way off His path that He has planned for us um, and just all that we're to do. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one and I'll get myself situated back on track. There we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about these four points today um, and we're going to go through each one. Every time I get up here, I'm full of questions. I'm questioning myself. I'm questioning all of you out there. Um, and Rob, when he prepares these messages, like me, he probably gets a lot more out of them when you're preparing them. Now I'm here to hopefully share with you that you all can get out something that uh, I put together. So are we fighting God's plan in our life? Um, even if you think you know the plan, we really don't know the plan. Um, being able to kind of roll with it and question ourselves. Actively looking for direction and got the way that God wants us to go. Um, are we actively seeking that? And even though God has our entire life's plan for us, um, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And the Bible talks in many ways about how it's going to be a hard path to follow. And uh, the very ending slide uh, is going to relate to that very well. Um, so first and foremost, are you fighting God's plan in your life? Are you living a comfortable life? Are you content? Are you just kind of going with the motions? Um, are you going to just keep going the way you're going till either you retire or you die? Um, are you just going to live this life how you are? Or are you going to be willing to change if God pulls you in a direction? Are you willing to take that leap? leap? Um, not wanting to change. We're content again. Um, no reason to change. Or look for change. We're just kind of rolling with the punches and going how it goes, which is okay sometimes. I mean, we all need a break, uh, but are we willing to make those changes if we get pulled in that direction? Um, these are all hard questions, for myself especially. Uh, I'm guilty of all this, um, but that's probably why I was able to put it together today, because I related my own life um, that I hope you all can also relate to. Um, Maybe you're not willing to change um, and make the next step in your walk with Christ. Maybe you're just, there's no way anything's going to change in your life. There's no way you're going to change who you are. Um, and I encourage you to just think and pray about that. Um, so a personal, <clears throat> I guess, story about what called me to this message today um, is actually perfect in our lives. Having a child right now. Um, and the process that that went through, I was definitely one that was guilty of not knowing I wanted to have a child. Um, I didn't think that I wanted to have a child for a very long time, probably all the way up until we decided that we're going to leave that to God um, and not try to control that ourselves. Um, God made that choice that we were meant to have a child, and it wasn't our choice to uh, decide otherwise. And um, now we're blessed with Finn, and uh, I guess I'm a kid guy now. I mean, I never really was before. I'll, I'll admit it. Um, and I take this in the right way. My wife will probably let me know later. But I, even before having a kid, I always say puppies are so much cuter than babies. So until you have your own kid, then you may feel totally differently. So uh, I do feel totally differently. So um, anyways, 
leaving that's a good example of just leaving it to God not trying to control life kind of let life pray to him and just let him kind of guide you and direct you in whatever direction he has for you um, so listening to your peers is another thing um, they can draw you down a path if you're around the wrong people they will draw you down a path that maybe you shouldn't be um, heading towards and you need to be able just to as a Christian notice that and kind of get a hold on that um, and considering when you need to remove yourself from that situation or you also I talked on this last time when you're around friends that are leading you down a bad path um, trying to still be a part of their lives as a Christian and trying to help them go on a good path but also not getting sucked in um, to maybe their ways or maybe how they're talking or maybe the things that they're doing um, outside of when you're hanging out with them. Maybe they're doing just poor decisions throughout the whole way. Um, a great story in the Bible is Jonah and the whale that goes right along um, with somebody that was trying to fight God's direction for him. So um, Jonah 1, 1 through 3 states, One day long ago God's word came to Jonah, Amitya's son, up on your feet and on the way to the big city of Nineveh. To them, they're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. But Jonah got up and went the other direction to Tark. Tarshish? Is that right? Anybody? Tarshish? Anybody got anything better? Okay, we'll go with that. Tarshish. Um, running away from God. He went down the port of Joppa and found a ship headed to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board, joining those going to Tarshish as far away from God as he could get. But God sent a huge storm at the sea, the waves towering, the ship was about to break into pieces, the sailors were terrified. So I stopped there with that verse because I think hopefully all of us know the story of the whale and everything beyond that. But that's pretty much God calling him back in. He ends up in the whale, flips him in the other direction, spits him out on a beach. Um, so God will rope us back in whether we like it or not. Um, and that's our hope is that he ropes us back in. But we got to be willing um, to ask God for that direction and for him to try to help get us in that direction. Um, we all need to be asking God in our daily lives uh, to be able to give it to him and trust him that he has the road mapped out for us. Can you say that you're asking God for his guidance daily? Um, and do you set time away, every, do you set time every day to do that? Um, are you actively doing that? Uh, in our house, it usually ends up around dinner time. It's when we're all together, hopefully, not all the time, um, but hopefully we're all together at dinner. And as we're praying for our meal, we try to just make sure that we're asking God for direction in our lives. Um, it's a daily occurrence that we don't know. Uh, we just are hoping that we're in the spot that we're supposed to be, as all of you probably are as well. Um, but forming that habit daily just asking him if you're where you're supposed to be and in the path that you that he has planned for you. Um, what if God called you tomorrow, if you're working a job, to just quit your job and go to ministry? Would you be willing to do that? Um, that goes back to the comfort thing. That'd be difficult for me. I love what I do, and I feel like we're doing a lot of ministry at the food bank, but if somebody said, hey, you got to quit tomorrow and go do something else, I get set in my ways and I'm comfortable, um, that'd be difficult, but it's kind of a question that just gets you thinking, would you be willing to make that leap of faith? Um, or what if he called you to move across the country? Leave what you're used to, leave your friends and family and just get up and go. Um, I know my parents, and I was born in North Carolina, but they were living up here in Ohio close to family. And they moved to North Carolina. Dad was a camp director down in North Carolina. Um, that had to have been a hard decision just to get up and move away from all your family and support and go down there to be a director down there. Um, he en ended up back here in Pennsylvania then being a camp director later on. But that, that's just an example. Are you willing to kind of just pick up and go if you felt led in one direction uh, by God? Um, truly taking leaps of faith and just uh, 
going above and beyond what you're used to. Um, excuse me, how about when you purchased your house? Did you ask God if that was where you're supposed to live? Or where you were supposed to purchase? Do you feel good about that? Um, or even the church? Did you ask God that if this is the place you're supposed to be to worship? Um, there's lots of options out there. Um, I know Celine and I, when we joined this church, we, we were going somewhere else, which was fine. We, we still enjoy that church. Um, Rob just asked me to come talk on the food bank one day, and we ended up liking the service. And what Rob had to say, he kept me intrigued. He kept us kind of thinking the day that we, we liked that. Um, it was a longer service than we were used to. Rob definitely has a longer service than many pastors do, but he was able to keep me thinking the whole way through. Um, usually in past experiences when somebody talks that long I get lost and I'm like daydreaming or whatever it may be so that's a reason that we kind of ended up here um, prayed about that this was the right decision to start coming here um, so those are just a couple examples just to kind of get you thinking hopefully about just remembering to ask God uh, for help and guidance in his plan in your life so a couple verses to go along with that Psalm 23 1 through 3 um, the Lord is my shepherd. We all know this one. Um, I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right past bringing honor to his name. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next one too real quick. So Psalm 32, 8. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. So these are reassuring things from God that, I mean, He's there for us. All we got to do is ask and He will give us the strength. Um, whatever we're to do here on this earth, there is verses and verses through the Bible that you can find that He reassures you. He's there for you. You just got to look for Him and you got to ask Him just to continue to help. Um, the journey along the way will not be easy, but He will be there throughout everything as long as you let Him. Next one, have you ever been mad at God? Have you ever blamed him for anything that's going on in your life? Um, maybe you're trying to control things that are happen happening in your life and you're just uh, blaming God for the bad things that are happening. Um, this could be anything from someone passing away that you love, which is going to happen to us all. It's, uh, it's the way of life. Or maybe getting sickness or diagnosed with a sickness that you're blaming God for how that could ever happen to you or someone that you know. Um, or even just you are mad at things that God didn't answer for you. You feel like they weren't ne ever answered. You asked Him for help and you asked Him for guidance and it just was never cut and dry answered in front of you. Um, happens all the time. I feel like uh, personally in our lives we're always asking for guidance, asking for help, asking for just what way He wants us to go with certain things and you still question it afterwards. But I truly believe that if you ask him for direction and then make a decision, you're still going to be going in a direction that he has planned for you overall. Um, you just got to be willing to listen and roll with it. Um, so we sometimes hope we can expect easy and simple lives as a Christian. Maybe you think you're here in church and everything's going to go easy because I'm a Christian, I'm showing up to church. Um, but we can look at example and example how that's not true. You have to go beyond these doors and just truly uh, show your Christian ways and everything that you do um, and accept God as your Savior. Um, an example of this, we didn't make church last week, but Rob preached on two weeks ago, if you were here. Um, he just mentioned uh, in his prayer request about all those being executed for being Christians in Nigeria right now. Um, could you honestly think of our life here and then think of being in Nigeria and be like the Christians there and still adamant that they're a Christian and knowing that their life is in danger from day to day. Um, those are people there that they don't care that they may get executed for believing in Christ. So it's just a total change for me to even think about, could I do that, what they are doing over there? Um, just, we have lots of differences in the world we live in today. Um, so just think that, uh, think, Take that into consideration that there's people out there actually making life and death, death decisions to be a Christian. Um, if things do not go your way, are you blaming God? Um, if you don't get a raise at work, uh, you were expecting to get a raise and you don't, 
Um, or if you can't afford that new car that you want, are you blaming God for things like that? Um, or are you just asking him for guidance and direction of, okay, if you didn't get the things that you wanted, are you supposed to stay how you're doing? Or are you supposed to make changes to be able to make those things happen? What's a need? What's a want? Um, we always go through that when you're doing finances, even at the food bank. What do we need and what do we want? Safety usually always trumps everything. If it's a safety matter, we always have to buy whatever we need. Um, but same in our lives. What do we need as Christians and what do we want in our daily lives? Um, so kind of asking yourself those questions and accepting that maybe it's not the time for those things. Maybe it's not the time in your life to have those things in your life. Um, so Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Um, it reads, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Um, so, about the devil, he is looking for opportunities that you're not asking God for direction. Um, when you are just out there going with the flow, um, forgetting to ask God to be a part of your life, he, he's looking for those opportunities to grab hold. Um, Sometimes we feel we already know his plan and we're trying to control every little bit of our lives. <clears throat> Christians, we sometimes get caught up thinking that if we do good deeds, we'll have a better life. And sometimes we try to control our daily lives trying to go in a different direction that God has planned. This goes back to my example um, about having a child. If we tried to control that and control that and control that, we may not have a child right now. Um, but God has a plan for us all on whether we're supposed to or not supposed to. And um, hopefully as parents and lots of parents in this room, all you try to do is raise your child in a Christian manner that they can grow up to believe the same beliefs. But it's up to us as, a, as, to, raise their as to raise our children um, in a manner like that. Bring them to church and trying to teach them Christian ways. Um, sometimes we try to over control our daily activities um, even though God has a total different direction. Um, we can all do the right things in the eyes of man, but remember to ask God for his guidance. We could be doing things entirely different than he has in store for us. Um, so we're trying to please each other and not trying to actually please uh, God and what he has ultimately planned. Rob touched on this, uh, this geez, might have been four weeks ago. It, was right around, it might have been his Christmas sermon. Um, Jesus knew everything that he was going to go through before he came to earth. Um, Rob talked on that. And it definitely was a different sermon for me. It wasn't your normal, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that he kind of did a spin off of um, talking about God knew he was going to die on the cross. Uh, Jesus knew before he even came to the earth. So Jesus knows kind of our plans for our lives um, before we are even in existence as well. So Proverbs 28, 25, and 26. Greed causes fighting. Trusting the Lord leads to prosperity. Those who trust in their own insight are foolish, but anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. So that verse right there, um, I found a lot of verses that go right along with what I'm talking about. It, was, it wasn't very hard to go through and find these verses, but um, trusting in the Lord leads to prosperity. If we trust that He will guide us, we will be prosperous um, in our lives here on this earth. And then beyond that. Um, so maybe you're already asking God for direction. Maybe you are daily just trying to ask Him, Hey, Lord, please guide me. Please tell me which way I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be at. Um, many of us can agree we felt our direction that he is pulling us maybe doesn't align with our wants and our needs um, and we like to fight it um, and it's hard not to I mean we know what we need in our lives we know what will pay the bills we know what will get us up in the morning and make us feel good um, and we usually do things and make those decisions to align with that um, so back to what I've been talking about in many slides, are we willing to change that if we felt pulled in the direction by God? Um, getting impatient, that is a huge one. Um, feeling that we ask God, but is our request coming true? Um, and we have something in our mind of what we're asking for and what we hope that happens. 
he has something totally different planned possibly. He may have exactly what you have planned, but he may have something different. Um, and it's on his time, not our time, and that's difficult. Our, our lives today are busy. Um, this week for me was crazy. It was a busy week uh, with the snow at the food bank, with getting ready for a nasty weather food bank day, and with Mr. Finn not wanting to sleep too well, it made for a long week. Um, so kind of those, as you pray for it, you don't know what's going to be in store. I didn't know last week that this week was going to be like that. Um, but God will get you through. Um, I, I'm up here today no matter what week I had. And I, I'm blessed to be up here and be able to share with you this morning. Um, and then I know we all fall in the boat of trying to ask God for wisdom um, and question maybe His plan. So are we questioning what wisdom He gave us? Are we questioning maybe what he get he, that time frame thing? It may happen in a second, it may happen in an hour, it may happen in years and years when he answers your question. Um, but if you continue to pray, it will come back around. But um, once he gives you that answer, are you willing to take it and are you willing to run with it? Um, Isaiah thirty twenty one reads: Whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, "This is the way. Walk in it." I think that's perfect. I mean, I put a right and a left up there uh, turning. Um, God will guide us in the direction. If we're supposed to turn right, if we're supposed to turn left, the decisions that we will make in our life. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Um, those of us that have been in church a long time, it's one of probably the first, one of the first verses we hear. Um, and in all the ways... In all ways, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Um, I, I like to think that picture is probably of some climbers out on some rocks somewhere, um, trying to assist each other up, whether it is or isn't, I'm going with that. Um, but you're trusting in that other person. They, they have your life on the line sometimes. I mean, some people out there do free climbing and they don't have ropes or anything tethered to them. Not so much for me, but in this case, it, it sure looks like that. They made it look like that in this picture. Um, it's kind of like God. Are you willing to hang off the edge and let him catch you? Are you willing to trust in him um, that he will guide you in a safe direction in your life in the way that he has planned? Um, so no one said being a Christian was easy. Um, the easy button kind of went away, I think. I don't know. Is it Staples, right? That does the easy button. I don't know if they really hound on that anymore. I, for a while there, it was always the easy button. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we had an easy button just to reach out and touch when we need help uh, or we need an answer? Let's hit the easy button and make it simple. Let's, uh, we don't have that, but God is our answer. Praying to God and asking Him is your easy button. Um, it may not seem like it's easy, um, but it truly is, as Christians, the direction that we should go. Um, doing things out of our comfort zone may be nerve-wracking and difficult, but we are called as Christians to ask God to just direct us and help make that happen. A good example um, of how God's past may test you is maybe um, you're being called to the food bank. I'm using the food bank example again. Um, food bank can be physically difficult and physically demanding, and there's lots of lifting involved. And you may portray that as, hey, I can't help because I can't physically do the job. Um, but there's actually a lot of things that you could do. Uh, we pack just things into bags. Um, we wave traffic in the right line. Um, if people get in chaos, traffic is a very good example. If people did not have direction for traffic, it would be all chaotic. And they would be mad because they're out of line. I showed up here and so-and-so skipped me. Um, I'd like to pull my Christian ways on a lot of these people that get mad as far as somebody jumped in line or not. But anyways, it's a good example of just kind of keeping your cool, but there's jobs for everybody, no matter your physical abilities. Um, and even if you physically can't be out there like yesterday in the weather, I said before, prayers are a huge thing for both the church and for organizations such as that. So uh, being reminded there, you may be being called to some or other organization and just helping um, your neighbor get through and just being able to support them. Um, I talked earlier about friends and you may lose friends and you may lose relationships making some of these decisions and it may be hard to do that. Um, but I would encourage 
you if you decide to go that route of somebody that is not living a Christian lifestyle, take an opportunity to witness to them. Um, don't totally cut them out of your life, but uh, do what's right for your life to f surround yourself by other Christians, but also um, help those that are not living a Christian way uh, just get on the right path. Um, again, that bad things are going to happen along the way. Um, if we could hit the easy button every time, that would make our life simpler. We don't have a true easy button that's going to make it easy. Um, we need to be able to roll with the punches and ask God uh, for His backup. Uh, whenever we get down a path that we shouldn't be, we need to be able to call on Him to get us through difficult situations. Matthew 7, 13, 15 reads, um, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. Going in the direction the gate is narrow it says. The gate to heaven is narrow but um, the devil has a big old wide gate. Um, if you're a Christian and you're following the right path and trying to get God to lead you, He will get you through that narrow gate um, and welcome you into heaven. Um, so I'll leave you all with this as a final thought today. Are you following the path that God truly has made out for you? Let's, uh, let's stand and sing and uh, go ahead and give God the honor and praise for all that He's able to do for us each and every day.
and look through these. So here is the announcements that Rob put there, um, January 19th. Um, what we got, Pittsburgh? It's Winter Jam. Winter Jam, thank you. Um, does he have multiple on this or is this all the same thing? So March 9th, is January 19th and March 9th to different locations yes, for Winter Jam? Yes, okay. um, And then $15 donation at the door. Women's Fellowship uh, collection. January collection is box jello and pudding. And I heard before it was like the jello that's like the powdered jello in the boxes. Um, okay. And then Thon's still going on. And it has, uh, I believe Abby said in February is going on until. So. Yeah, donations are uh, being accepted until January 26th. January 26th, okay, so uh, donations till January 26th, you said to get in for con. And any other announcements at all? Okay. Uh, leave here letting God guide your path through life and asking Him to take control of your future. Look to Him for direction and know that in His time He will provide. Amen. Have a great week. Thanks for coming. and. Great to give Rob and Denise an opportunity to be out at a couple other churches this morning. So, good.